So a couple of years ago, I came here and talked about the human body's connection to the ocean, how we're all born with these amphibious dive reflexes that allow us to dive very deep for minutes and minutes at a time. And I talked about the people who had honed these abilities and used it, these free divers who were connecting with the ocean, who were connecting with themselves and with oceanic animals. And they were doing stuff like this. They were diving face to face with sharks. They were diving with dolphins. They were even having encounters with sperm whales. And along the way, I learned how to free dive. And the first thing I learned about free diving was that it was all about breathing. The only way that you can hold your breath for about three to four minutes at a time and dive down a few hundred feet is if you knew how to breathe and optimize each breath and were able to hold it um, in certain ways and to calm yourself and to calm your heart. So the ability to hold your breath and to free dive, those were completely connected. They were one thing. But I kept wondering, what were the other benefits of breathing this way on dry land? Well, these guys knew it. Yogis, um, they understood that respiration was absolutely part of health. You can't have health before you master respiration. So I asked a few doctors if how we breathe really mattered. And the answer I heard was pretty much, it didn't. Basically, breathing like this was the same as breathing like this. The point was, we just needed to get oxygen into us. As long as we weren't diseased, our bodies would do the rest. We were all built with these amazing mechanisms that allow us to compensate if we're breathing too fast or too slow or too deep. Our, our bodies could do everything, and they would always maintain homeostasis. So I gave up researching this in any real way, but I kept practicing all of these different breathing techniques I learned from the free divers. And I noticed something. I felt a lot better, had a lot more energy, got a lot fewer headaches, I lost some weight. And so I got even more interested in this just from a personal standpoint, and I started some more um, stringent and, um, and intense breathing techniques. Uh, this is called Sudarshan Kriya, where you just sit cross-legged and you breathe in certain patterns. And I noticed within about five minutes of trying this for my first time, I sweated through my t-shirt, I sweated through my socks, through my jeans, my hair was wet. So if how we breathe didn't matter, why would sitting stationary and breathing in a specific pattern elicit such a transformation in my own body, give me so much energy, make me sweat like this. So obviously there was something going on here. So I started talking to some more researchers um, who told me that yes, how we breathe was everything. And they were discovering that good breathing was essential to health and longevity, and poor breathing was a problem that um, was contributing to a bunch of different problems. And how we breathed was actually, in many ways, as important to what we ate. We took in about 30 pounds of air in and out of our lungs every day. Um, how we breathed was also as important as how much we exercised. So this good breathing, that was very good, it was very healthy. Poor breathing was really bad. And as a matter of fact, uh, poor breathing habits were attributed to a number of chronic problems, hypertension, depression, chronic sinusitis, acid reflux, all of these things were either exacerbated or sometimes caused by poor breathing. 